In this video, we're going to talk about how to do some batch reporting using the Wonderware historian as the data repository for your batch records and using Dream Report to extract that information to be able to get that batch level type reporting. And one of the first things I need to do to create a batch report is I need to connect to that process data that's residing in my Wonderware historian. So I click on the driver configuration. I already have this configured. I click on the WWHIST here and I say configure. And this is where I pointed to the Wonderware runtime database. I can do the test connection. You can see I have a valid connection to the historian database. I want to include the system tag. And I'm going to take all the defaults here and say OK. So the next thing I need to do is go create that batch definition. This is a unique parameter that gets set up inside a dream report that allows me very easily to extract information for a specific batch. So if I click on batch definition over here, what you're going to do is browse into your Wonderware historian and you're going to put in the tag name that's associated with the batch number for the report that you want to generate. So I'm going to open up an existing report I have here and show you how that's configured to create a batch report. So I'm going to click on my reactor batch report and then if I go into this top area I'm going to get the batch ID, the start time, the end time, and the batch duration. There's some automatic statistics that I can pull from the system. So if I double click on this I'm using an automated statistic table and I'm looking at a tag name. This is just one of the tag names I'm pulling from the system and it's batch based, right? Remember that batch that we defined before? There's that react to. So I'm going to go get information for the last one batch and some information I'm going to extract from that. I'm going to get the batch ID, the start time, the end time, and the batch duration to show that on the screen. So I also want to pull some statistics about some of the key variables that I have while my batch is running. So you can see here the variables that I'm going to pull information from, and I'm going to pull statistics such as the max, the min, the average, and the standard deviation for those variables. The way this is configured, if I double click on this, there's the tags, and those tags were put there by browsing into my historical database. So I could go here, and you can see I browsed into the Wonderware historian. I can go find all my tags, you can see I'm picking my React level, my React temperature, and my product level. Once those are defined, then I can go pick the statistic that I want to show. There's where I pick from the automatic statistic table. I pick the maximum, the minimum, the average, and then my standard deviation. And the Dream Report is automatically going to calculate those variables for me. The additional configuration step I need to make here is make sure I point that to the batch that I configured before. Remember earlier we configured React 2 batch, so I need to pick React 2 batch and make sure I'm using a batch base report. I also want to show a trend chart of some of this data on my report, so if I go here and click on my chart object and take that and drag it over to my work pane here, if I double click on that, this is where I'm going to configure the tags. So I go into the Wonderware historian, I browse into those, and I go pull out my React level, my temperature, my product level, and I associate that with a specific batch, right? The report type is batch report, and I'm going to go pick that batch two that we previously defined, and I'm going to get information about the last one batch, and I can pick the pen colors and things like that. In this report, I also want to show some alarm information associated with the process during the batch runtime. So before I do that, I need to go to the driver configuration. And I'm going to point this to the Wonderware alarm database. So I'm going to configure this, and I'm going to go point that to my history server. Basically, I'm pointing it to the Wonderware historian. So I'm defining a filter, so I'm going to extract information from the system where the tag name associated with the alarm ends with R32. So this is how I can filter the alarms for this report for a specific variable. So once I have my driver configured to point to my alarm database, then I can go pick an alarm table, drop that on the screen. Then if I configure this alarm table, I'm going to go point that to that filter and point that to that external history server that I defined. Again, we're going to define this by the batch. So now I have my report configured. I'm going to make sure I save the project here. And then I can reload my report. So that's going to take these reports that I just generated and load them into the runtime engine that I can go generate the reports. So now the report is saved. I'm looking at the runtime management console. If I go click on my reactor batch report, I'm going to go generate the report. You can see the report is actually generating reports in the queue. 
it finished now I can open up that report and you can see there's a PDF of this report it's giving me the start time the end time the batch ID it's giving me some statistics in a table here it's giving me a uh, trend chart here and it's showing me the alarms that happened during this run of this specific batch so everything I need to know about the batch is encapsulated in this one report the other thing about this report is I can have it automatically generated at the end of the batch I can have the system automatically kick out this report and email someone this report so it's a great tool to be able to automatically generate a batch report at the end of the run so people can have that at their fingertips Dream Report also has a web portal, so I can go look at those reports in a web portal. So if I go look at those reports that I just generated, I can go to this Bioreactor batch report. If I click on this PDF, there's a PDF of that report that was generated earlier. And I can go back in time and go look at the reports that were previously run. So it's a good portal to be able to go look at those reports and uh, go publish this so folks in your organization can go look at these reports online by themselves. The portal also lets me go back in time and generate a new report. So I can go back and say, I want to generate a new dynamic report. And the type of report is a batch report and browse into my database and find the actual batch. So if I want to go look at batch 1080 and I generate that report, it's going out to my database, extracting the information for batch 1080 and showing me that report on the screen. Well, thank you for watching today. If you have any questions about anything you saw in this video, please contact me at the email address on the screen. Thanks again.